In this video, we'll take a look at an example IP address and break down the structure of that IP address. And so for this example, I'm just going to look up the IP address of my computer using the IP config command. You can do this with your own computer if you want. And if you're using Linux or if you're using a Mac, you can use the IF config command. It does the same thing. So let's hit IP config. And let's grab the address of my computer. Here's my Wi-Fi connection. Here's the IP address of my computer. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that IP address. And actually, I'm not just going to copy the IP. I'm going to copy the subnet mask as well and the default gateway. Let me get all of that stuff. And then we're going to break down what all of these different addresses mean. So here's the set of addresses that I just captured. So the first thing that I want to show you is the IP address. Here's the IP address of my computer. And you may recognize this address range 192.168. I know that anything that starts with that is a private IP address. So I now know I have a private IP address on my computer. And so you'll notice that every single IP address has four numbers separated by three dots. 192.168.0.6. Each of these numbers are referred to as octets. So every single IP address in the world, whether it's public or private, is made up of four octets. Four numbers separated by decimal points. And this IP address is in what we call dotted decimal format. Basically meaning I'm using normal numbers separated by dots. Now also included in this output here is the subnet mask. We're going to get more into those later on. But basically the subnet mask identifies what is the network address and what is the host address. So this particular computer, and we can tell this based on the subnet mask, is in the 192.168.0 network because the first three octets are part of the network address and then this last little octet is the host address. Much more on that later. The third thing that we see here shown is the address of the default gateway. And basically the default gateway is the default way out. So if this computer is trying to send traffic to some destination, maybe a website on the internet, and this computer doesn't necessarily know how to get there. It's not something that it's on its own local network. It's something that's out there somewhere else. And this computer does not know how to get there. Well, the default gateway is where this computer will send all of the traffic that it essentially does not know what to do with. The default gateway is typically a router and the router can intelligently forward traffic. So if the traffic needs to get to the internet, the router will know how to get there. If the traffic needs to get to a different building, the router will know how to get there. If the traffic needs to get to a different VLAN, the router will know how to get there. That's the purpose of the default gateway. And again, if you're not familiar with the concepts of VLANs and routers and all those sorts of things, I strongly suggest taking my Introduction to Networking two-hour crash course. This course assumes you already have some of that knowledge. But now you've got your first taste of what an IP address is all about. And so over the next few lessons, we'll delve much deeper into address ranges and subnet masks and broadcast addresses and default gateways. Learn what all these concepts mean. 